Hello everyone. So my last video on Fantasy Star Online 2 actually did surprisingly well. In that video, I kind of just talked about the game in general and gave some thoughts on the new game coming out, Fantasy Star New Genesis. The video itself was completely unscripted and my discussion was pretty much all freeform or improv and me just kind of rambling across ideas. So I thought it would be pretty fun to put together this video that more specifically talks about Fantasy Star New Genesis in and of itself. As someone who pretty much plays Fantasy Star 2 recreationally, I don't really get too invested in any of the late game or hardcore aspects of the game, I thought it would be a pretty neat perspective for people to hear from what I would like to see from this game. I also went ahead and consulted my good friend who I've been kind of easing into the game. The two of us discussed some of our issues with Fantasy Star Online 2 and brainstormed some ideas and improvements we would like to see implemented in Fantasy Star New Genesis. That is going to be what this video is about, the casual player's wish list for Fantasy Star New Genesis. Wishlist item 1 easily has to be the menu system. Fantasy Star Online 2 has one of the most outdated and atrocious menus in pretty much all of gaming. The menus themselves are super cluttered and really difficult to navigate, many of the things that you're looking for are not intuitive as to where they can be located, and it's just a huge hassle for any new player looking to get into the game. It can be incredibly overwhelming to open up the menus, not understand where anything is, and the menus themselves are also just incredibly uh, frustrating to kind of, you know, navigate optimally, and that can really turn off a lot of new players as they try to manage inventory and do all of that stuff. Sure, as you continue using the menus, you eventually get used to them, but that's true with any system. In order to help engage new players into the core of the game, I think it would be incredibly important for New Genesis to really streamline this process and make the menus much, much greater than they currently are. The reason that I point this out as the most important topic is because it directly affects the rest of the points that I'm going to make throughout this video. Getting right on with it, wishlist item number two is inventory management. As you can imagine, the quality of the menu systems directly influences the quality of item management. Therefore, the first point being improved on quite a lot easily influences this one to a great extent. However, there are other aspects of inventory management that I really think needs addressed going forward. This is one of the biggest points that me and my friend talked about quite a lot. As he's a new player, this was an aspect of the game that he found a little frustrating and just overwhelming. The big issue for him was also the frequency of inventory management. After a single mission, you're constantly having to go into your inventory, send stuff to the storage, and figure out what to do with the items that you have. This could be very frustrating for a new player as they just want to jump into the game. They don't really want to care about the way the items are working and managing the menu system. Some of this does get resolved with experience as you eventually learn what not to and what to pick up, but for a new player, that type of information is not available and unless you have someone guiding you through that process. Eventually, I told him to just kind of ignore certain rarities of weapons in order to not have to constantly manage the inventory after missions. But even then, I think that this can be an improvement for the new Genesis title. There's many ways to do this. There's having separate inventories for certain items, there's having just a straight up bigger inventory going in, and all kinds of things that they can consider in order to make this a more enjoyable experience. Personally, I would love to see a bigger inventory and a separate inventory for consumables and material items. Now I know in base PSO2, some of these conveniences are addressed with the premium membership, but I think having a slightly better balance between the free player and the paid player can go a long way to player retention. Now those first two items I feel are the most important to address when moving from PSO2 to New Genesis. I feel these two will end up having the most impact on how a new player will be enjoying the game. The rest of the video I think still has its merits, but they're not on the same scale as the first two points. That being said, wishlist item number three is a material storage. 
Now I understand that this is something that does exist in PSO2 behind a timed paywall. I think this is something that needs to be a permanent upgrade, a one-time payment. Personally, I'm not against spending any money on this game. I have 95 hours into it, and I think having a $20 pay purchase to get a little more convenience is not something I'm against. A great example of this in action is Path of Exile's item stash. The convenience of having a currency tab that keeps track of all of the stuff for you as opposed to you having to manage and organize it yourself is something that a lot of people find valuable and are willing to spend $15, $20 to pick up. I did that personally and it greatly improved my experience with Path of Exile during my playtime. I think making a material storage a one-time payment and then maybe for premium members they get a slightly larger storage or something a little more convenient, I'm okay with that but I do think it needs to be a one-time investment instead of having this 72A ticket. This one's a little bit more minor, but I think it would greatly enhance the experience of dealing with all of these different currencies that the game has to offer and keep new players from feeling overwhelmed by these various currencies that they need to do important things in the game, such as upgrading items and trading for weapons. Wishlist item number four is making the trading system not behind a paywall. Now I am aware that you can obtain trading passes in the game without having to pay any money, but this system is not very intuitive and it doesn't really help a very new player get into that experience. Trading is a core part of MMOs and having your players have to kind of navigate this very ambiguous and unintuitive system in order to even access that can be a turnoff to engaging in said system. Now this one doesn't dramatically hinder a new player experience, but it does hinder the ability of a veteran player to kind of provide assistance to someone they're trying to get into the game. I know from my own experience, there's many times that I wish I could have just traded over some of my skill CDs or something along that nature to kind of give my friend the ability to get into the game much faster. Additionally, while certainly a more niche audience, there are MMO players who join games specifically to engage in their economies. The current restrictions to trading can be a big turnoff to these types of players. Wishlist item number 5 is a better skill learning system. While the CD system of PSO2 is not the worst, the RNG aspects of it can be pretty demoralizing to newer players. Sometimes you can find yourself leveling pretty quickly, but still unable to gain a bunch of the cool new skills that the game has to offer because you just got unlucky. Now some of this point does get remedied a little bit more by having a better trading system as discussed in the previous point, however I still think there could be some drastic improvements to how learning skills works. As someone who just learned the new advanced classes, Phantom, Hero, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce the third one, Having a skill system tied to certain classes I think can be an easy solution. I wasn't too demoralized by not having new skills to unlock, and it was really great to be able to play with all of the skills as soon as the classes were unlocked. Now this doesn't work throughout the entire game, but I think there's some balancing that they can do to make this experience a lot smoother. Additional to this, within the menu of your skills, they need to make it so that you can filter between the weapons. If you're playing a braver and looking for your katana skills, it feels really frustrating to have to scroll all the way down past the weapons that you don't even use just to find the couple of skills that you're looking for. As you can see, we have another point that is broadly affected by UI adjustments described in the first one. Even so, finding a better balance as to how quickly you can obtain new skills can keep new players excited to play your game. And finally, the last item on my wishlist is slight improvements to the class loadout system. The current class loadout system is already really solid. I really like that you can save a loadout for a particular class, that way you don't have to constantly do certain inventory management, but there are a couple of slight improvements that I think could go a long way for this system. The main improvement that I'm looking for is for any of your items in your inventory that is tied to a particular loanout to have some sort of icon that indicates whether or not it is currently saved in a loadout. There have been several times that I've gone through my inventory, noticed that I've had some really low level or low rarity gear, and was like, why the hell do I still have that, and proceeded to sell it. 
Then later on down the road, when I go to change back to one of my lower level classes, I get that sweet little icon that pops up and says, sorry, this item is missing from your inventory. I know it's kind of a small thing and there is the ability for me to lock my gear, but it still kind of gives a quality of life improvement to this system. Even if I lock my gear, I would still sometimes be like, why the hell did I lock a blue rarity item? That just doesn't make sense. I'm going to unlock this and go ahead and sell it. By providing me some kind of icon that tells me, hey, this is currently saved in a loadout, I would be like, oh, I don't want to sell that so that I can still go back and load up that class and still play it with a full set of gear. In a game like Fantasy Star that gives you access to every single class, this slight quality of life improvement will greatly enhance the experience for any of those players that really like to just pretty much play every single class and constantly switch between them. And that's my wish list for Fantasy Star New Genesis. I'm sure if I sat down for a little longer, I could come up with one or two more points, but I think these are the core that really encompasses some of the changes I think they should make. These changes, in my opinion, will drastically increase the player experience without really taking too much away from the paid incentives that the premium offers. This will keep players continually playing their game and also potentially incentivize them to pick up some of the premium offers. Besides, most people just spend their money on the cosmetic gacha system anyway. I mean, who doesn't want to cosplay their favorite Persona character or anime character? Obviously, it's the waifus that sell, right? But anyway, that's going to wrap up the video. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in and watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments some of your thoughts on what you would like to see included in New Genesis. And if you enjoyed the video, it would mean quite a lot if you could go down and hit that like button. It's just your typical YouTube stuff. The algorithm likes when you interact with the content, so it would help out the channel. And of course, if you want to see more gaming content from my channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I have many plans throughout this year to cover a variety of games, including Fantasy Star and New Genesis. That's going to wrap up today's video. I hope you guys really enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.